Well, on the subject of voting, for the first time this May, the election votes for the Mayor of London will be counted electronically. But since we're using the internet at home to work, shop and bank, why not vote using it? Well, electronic democracy is already being designed in Reading, where I put it to the test. We're all much busier than we used to be. It's hard enough to find the time to go shopping, let alone go to the village hall to vote. But what if instead of going to the polling station, the polling station came to you? Now a new system could bring voting to the supermarket, your home or wherever you are. It's not a moment too soon. Fewer and fewer people are turning out to vote, especially in local elections where only one in three people voted last year. Voting electronically might help overcome our apathy. If you could vote at the touch of a button anywhere that has an internet connection. But how could all that be as secure and accessible as voting in a polling station where we have to have our names checked off against a list of local residents, where we have our own personal ballot paper which we then in secret place a cross on for the candidate of our choice and post personally in the ballot box. Well, the answer is that the system has now been devised, which its makers say is so secure that we could one day be voting in the new government and prime minister from our own sitting rooms. We've got a sample of voters here in Reading, and we've kitted them out with all the necessary devices to try the system out. First off, this is Emma, who's 24, part of an age group that's least likely to vote, but quite at home with technology. She'll be voting on this game console. John is disabled. He finds it hard to get to the polling station. In the local village, it's difficult to get into the voting station, so I've had to do a postal vote to make it easier for myself. So John will be voting with a connection to the internet through a digital television and set-top box. Jane's a doctor and can't usually find the time to vote. She'll be voting on a handheld computer. Jake thinks voting is a bit of a bore. He's going to vote on this new mobile phone which connects to the internet. I'd like to vote, but often haven't got the time. I work part-time, I've got two young children, and therefore I really don't have the time to actually get out to the polling station and place my vote. So we're giving Kim a laptop to vote with. Now we've set up all our voters with gadgets in their homes, so while they now do their voting, I'm off to the central computer to check out the results. To increase our sample size, we asked their neighbours to vote too. Well, we're now going to put the system to a test with a question of our own. And here's the question. Would you be more likely to vote in a local election if you could vote electronically? In other words, for example, sitting in your sitting room without going to the polling station at all. This games console connects to the central computer through the internet. The computer registers Emma's call and what type of device she's voting from. It then sends back an electronic voting form. Emma has to enter her ID and password before she can vote. The system checks they match and that Emma hasn't voted before. Emma can look up background information before she finally makes her selection. The instant someone votes, the system sends out a scrambling message to their handset, which encrypts their vote so it can't be read by anyone else trying to hack into the system. The software provides a keyboard for each device, so here Jake can enter his name and password. As soon as his vote is made, it's scrambled and on its way to the central computer. It's almost as exciting as watching a general election. All we're missing is a springometer. Right, here they come now. I expect any second now we... Here we are. Jane takes a quick break to vote between seeing patients. The yes is clearly ahead there. Something like twice as many uh, yeses. Oh my goodness, three times, four times as many yeses as noes. So there it is, an overwhelming victory for the yeses. The final result, 43 yes, 6 no. But in practice, does it match the tried and tested security of the polling station? Kim tries to cheat the system and vote twice. Well, it's very politely told me that I've already voted, so I can't vote again. The system's creator believes the security of the encryption is effectively unbreakable. It's the strongest um, scrambling available at the moment, and it has yet to be broken. Are you really sure that someone can't hack into your system and bring it all tumbling down? Potentially, if you could 
amalgamate the, the processing power of every computer on the planet and dedicate it for a good few weeks, potentially you could unscramble the information. But that's what it would take today. The security level matches that of the most sophisticated online bank. So what do our home voters think of the system? Two minutes on the internet is a uh, better use of my time than an hour down to the polling station. I think it's a good idea actually, yeah, it saves you a lot of time, you don't have to leave the house, you can just sit down and do it from the pleasure of your own couch really, yeah, it's great. What about your local council, supposing they wanted to involve you in direct democracy and voting about a, a new sports ground or something? I think it would be a very easy and accessible way to vote on those kinds of issues, although I'd be a bit concerned that people would end up voting um, once every couple of weeks or something like that. I think uh, the day that the, the bin man collect the bins is something that the local council can probably decide by themselves. But on more major issues, perhaps the placement of a new sports ground, um, I think I would be interested to vote, yes. The first official online election will take place in Arizona, USA in March. Here in Britain, a new government bill means that later this year, local authorities could try out new methods of voting, and voting online may well be one of them. If you're on the web and would like to vote on the same question we asked our volunteers in Reading, point your browser at our website after the show. The address is www.bbc.co.uk slash tw. We'd really like to know what you think and we'll start running that poll straight after the show through the rest of the week.